Recently, you and I went out to see a movie together. It's always fun when that happens. Yes, we don't go out to movies as much as we used to. At an outdoor theater on the shores of Lake Mendota, there was a place for us as we watched West Side Story. I haven't seen it in about 20 years. Me neither. And uh, it was a delight. Just seeing it on the big screen, you really feel the colors of the movie. You know who my favorite character is in that movie? The camera. Oh. The way the camera moves, it almost breathes with the dancers. It allows you, the viewer, just an, a real access to those routines. It makes you feel like you're dancing with them. If you've never seen it before and you don't know if you like musicals or not, there's a shot of Bernardo and his two buddies when they, right at the beginning of the movie. They're walking down and they all kick way up to the side yeah. and then like come towards the camera. If you do not feel something amazing at that moment, just turn the movie off. You're not going <laughs> to like anything else in the movie. Another thing that people make fun of is like, oh, these street gangs are prancing around New York with their modern dance moves. Mm -hmm. But really, the movie's not about tough guys. The movie's about kids, and it's about the grace and beauty of youth. Yeah, and it's about passion. Right. And what's more passionate than fighting and dancing? And it's, loving. And loving, yes, exactly. Rita Moreno. I say, God damn. <laughs> I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. Sci-Fi July continues here in the basement with our second sci-fi movie, or our first, depending on how you feel about Panic in Year Zero. Tonight's movie may endanger our very lives because of our advanced age. We might have to go on the run, just like Logan in Logan's Run. Yes! <laughs> Never seen it in full. Wow! Released in 1976, this film stars the man who you once called the Billy Zane of the 60s and 70s, Michael <laughs> York. That's right, Michael York. It co-stars Peter Ustinov and Farrah Fawcett. Ooh, and Jenny Gutter. She's a very important person of my pubescent years. Logan's Run was nominated for two Oscars, and it won a special Oscar for visual effects, including the first use of laser holography in a film. Play along at home to try to figure out which actor is a hologram. The late great Roger Ebert referred to this movie as a vast, silly extravaganza, yet he still gave it three stars. Tonight's movie is full of futuristic architecture and fantastic structures. Perhaps you'd like it to create a fantastic structure of your own. Of course I would. It's a tube. Some weird sphere kit. It glows in the dark. A glow-in-the-dark bubble. Just like everything in the future does. You're gonna bring out the Buckminster Fuller in me. Run. Run. Run to the old leather couch, and then keep running with us as we watched Logan's Run. Do do run run run, do do run run. Logan's Run, an anagram is Logan Earn. Somewhere in this city, there is the operator of a pocket calculator. It is the year 2274, and everyone lives in a great domed city. Logan 5 is looking into a nursery at his new son, Logan 6. And the baby has a little gem on its hand. That's because it lives in the future. Not that he's going to get to raise him or even see him again, because that's not how things work here. His buddy Francis Seven stops by. Francis Seven hates hanging around with his racist grandfather, Francis Five. <laughs> it's a well-organized utopian society. The only catch, nobody lives past the age of 30. One is terminated, one is born. Simple, logical, perfect. What makes you so curious? Yellow. You know who his seed mother was? <laughs> of course not. I'm curious, not sick. If he was curious and sick, he would be curious yellow. They're on their way to the carousel. That's where all the current 30-year-olds go, and they do this ritual where they're all destroyed by fire, and then they supposedly get renewed, which is kind of like reincarnation, I suppose. They go to the carousel, and it's like a football game. All these people come in, they're wearing crazy masks. Everyone's cheering. They start floating around and exploding. Cirque de Flambe. Yep. <laughs> There's a runner loose. He needs to go take care of it because he's a Sandman. They will chase you down and kill you or terminate you. They go out into the hallways and they see the runner. 
They start shooting at, shooting at him with their blaster guns. Come on, guys, you can catch him. He's an old, broken down, 30 year old man. Run, runner! <laughs> but eventually, they terminate the runner. Logan goes back to his bachelor pad. Now it's time to relax with a cool, refreshing Michelob. And he calls up a woman on the woman machine. She just appears. And he's like, hey, let's get busy. Welcome. TV of the future has gotten really cool. <laughs> it's like the Tinder of the future. <laughs> Her name is Jessica. But she doesn't want to have the sexy times. She wants to have a conversation about society. Why is it wrong to run? You shouldn't even be thinking such things. Look, you know what to do. One, two, you know what to do. <laughs> Doesn't look like he's going to be getting any. Luckily, Francis shows up with a couple of hotties, and uh, they have a big old cloud party. The next day, Logan checks in at the office. Logan got some stuff out of the pockets of that runner, and he goes to show them to the computer. Logan 5, approach and identify. Do you know what this is? It's an unk. It means sanctuary. This is a place where all of the runners who escape go to. You will find sanctuary and destroy. How will I do that? I'm still, I'm not even red on my hand button. The computer performs a retrogram. We're going to take off four years of your life and your hand's going to start flashing now. He says, hey, what's the deal? I'm going to get those years back, right? The computer doesn't answer. The oh, computer crashed. Better restart. <laughs> The wheel of death comes up, the wheel of spinning. <laughs> He's starting to have suspicions about if renewal even exists. He remembers Jessica had one of those onks on. So he tracks her down. He's like, hey, you want to talk about, you know, running away from all this? Look at me, huh? I'm about to die and I don't want to die. There's a big couch of poop. <laughs> <laughs> she goes and talks to her friends. You don't seem quite sure, Jessica. You don't seem quite under 30, lady. That haircut. <laughs> Not under 30 by a damn sight. <laughs> Meanwhile, Logan gets a call that there's a runner loose in the cathedral. He takes Jessica to this slummy part of town. Entering a reservation for violent delinquents. Authorized persons only. And they're plus ones. <laughs> it's filled with feral kids. Including the Cubs, who are like a street gang, basically. They meet this cute little girl named Mary Two. Are you my pop-pop? What a sweetheart. Dirty face. Don't be afraid. Snap. But he runs afoul of the cubs. And they scare them off because they only have knives while there's a laser gun on Logan's side. How many of you want this to be lasting? I know what you're thinking. Did I shoot five fire bursts <laughs> or six? To be honest, in all the excitement, I lost count myself. So I guess what I'm saying is, do you feel lucky, cub? The cubs go away and Logan finds the runner. Runner. I can see you behind those holes. He says, I'm not going to terminate you. But he doesn't know that Francis followed him. Francis sees that runner and he terminates her. And he saw that Logan let her go. Logan decides that he needs to go and get a new face. You can do that here in the future. So they go down to the old plastic surgeon. The secretary there is named Holly and she has a face you might recognize. From Charlie's Angels. The doctor shows Logan his amazing surgery machine. It's got all kinds of lasers. He wants to run. Run? He's a sandman. So he wants to run on the beach. The doctor gets a call from somebody, and he decides, I'm not going to give this guy a new face. I'm going to kill him with lasers. They get into a scuffle. Oh, he's a victim of his own machine. This is just like Kafka's The Penal Colony. Yes. The sandmen are coming. Looks like the jig is up for Logan, and he's truly on the run. They make an escape out of the secret passageway, which is through the orgy room. Yep, there's some sex going on in there. You know how to have sex, don't you? <laughs> sex in the future is just going to be people going like this. <laughs> Oh, man, stop. <laughs> <laughs> they find the secret passageway. Can I help you, sir? <laughs> and there's a bunch of guards in there, and they got these sticks, and they're like, who's this guy, Jess? But then Holly shows up and says, yeah, this guy's a runner. He's on our side. They say, all right, go to Sanctuary. Soon a bunch of sandmen 
Sandmans? Sand people. No. They show up and start shooting everybody. It's all the Sandmen. Logan and Jessica do make it out. They get to the door that says, in, use your key to get through here. It's that little Ankh medallion. Jessica drops hers in a pool of water, but luckily Logan still has his and they get through. Francis doesn't make it, but he sees the dropped key and he opens that door up again. They're going through this weird underground place where they see water. Francis sees them and he shoots the glass water wall. Suddenly they're flooded with water. They're going to drown, but they find a doorway out and there's an elevator. They take it up and it starts getting really cold. Oh crap, it's winter and we're soaking wet. <laughs> I bet you're wishing for that fiery carousel now, huh, Logan? <laughs> they emerge into this fantastic ice cave. Maybe we can put these around us. Let's take our clothes off first before they freeze on us. Yes! Welcome, humans. I am ready for it. <laughs> that is terrifying. His name is Box. Overwhelming, am I not? Are you too startled? Do you wish to say domo arigato to me? <laughs> he says, I'm glad to see you. I am a robot. More than machine. Oh, man. More than a fusion. More than a feeling. This robot has been killing all of the runners. Because Box's job was to get shipments of food and freeze it. The sh food shipments stopped coming, but these people continued to come, and so he just thought that they're food. Fish and plankton, sea greens, and protein from the sea. And naked chicks. He's a nutty robot. So he says, now I will freeze you. It's my job. Luckily, Logan has a gun, and so he can shoot up the robot. He wrestles with the robot. Jessica is useless. They kill Box. They emerge from the ice cave and they see the sun for the first time. But Francis Seven is still hot on their heels. They jump into a lake. They decide to have sex. Why not? All right, we're having sex. <laughs> and they see in the distance a big city. They go around, they see all these monuments. Thank goodness this place hasn't been destroyed by damn dirty apes. <laughs> They see a statue of old man Lincoln, and they're like, he's such a, he's so old. How does he look so old? They go into this big building, and they find a person. He's so old. Look at those things on his face. Look at that color of his hair. This is sanctuary, isn't it? Sanctuary? You're not here to gentrify me, are you? I like my neighborhood the way it is. He kind of dodders around. He's a little cuckoo in the cabeza. I got all these cats. Is that what they're called? Yeah, and they've each got their own name. This is Whiskers 5. Over here is Fluffy 7. What kind of a place is this? It's a place that reeks of cat shit, for one thing. He's been living here his entire life. When he dies, he wants to be buried. But Francis finds them. He's got Jessica at gunpoint. We had good times. And great oldies. <laughs> Actually, no oldies. It's the way our society is structured. <laughs> You are terminated, runner. She grabs the gun and throws it away, jumps and swoops to... No, no! <laughs> kind of went like this. He had like a... <laughs> and Francis and Logan have a huge brawl. <laughs> Jessica does nothing to help. And Logan beats Francis to death with a flagpole. Francis, his buddy, dies in his arms. Now that we know that all this exists, we have to go back. Back? To what? To what? <laughs> Jessica doesn't like the idea. The old man doesn't like the idea either. She promised you'd stay here and bury me. You did. And so they say, let's bring the old man with us. Once they see him, they'll be convinced. They take the trek back to the city, and they find a very difficult way to get back into it. Stay here. We'll come back for you. They swim under the water. They get into the city. Logan tries to tell everyone, You don't have to die. You can live past 30. Uh, believe me. And he is captured by the sand men. He's taken to the computer and interrogated. Did you find sanctuary? Did you do what I told you to do? Computer reads his mind through this process called interrogation. <laughs> I didn't write it down. We will begin surrogation. Computer goes into his brain. Makes him talk in hologram fashion. There is no 
sanctuary. The computer does not like what it's hearing. I'm sorry, Guantanamo bot. You can be old. There's life beyond the walls. There's a freezer bot who's eating people. <laughs> may me not, may me not, may me not resist. He's twisting the computer's melon. Yeah. God, it does not compute. Does not compute. <laughs> Come on, sing Daisy. And the computer blows up. A lot of the city blows up as well. Now they're able to go outside and they see that old man. Wow. Look at the things on his face and the hair up, up top. You're amazing. Let us touch you. And he's like, all right, as long as I can touch this one over here. I'm so popular. Now who's going to bury me? <laughs> Jessica and Logan survive and they hug it out. This is a new start for the society of Logan's Run. Yep. Logan's Run. Man, it feels good not to be running anymore. Pretty relentless. This movie was suitably futuristic for my taste. There was lots of blinking lights and beeping and booping and holography. It's interesting because if you look at when the movie came out, it was 1976. It was one year shy of Star Wars. A boy who loses his family and goes on an adventure and there's nothing really explained about how Death Stars work. Well, this is, this is our world and we have to talk about it all the time so that you at home can understand. So that is detrimental to the movie? I think that this seems a lot more like just kind of heavy and burdensome to watch to try to put it all together when, you know, Star Wars is more like, no, we're just having fun here. We're having an adventure. This movie wasn't as fun as I wanted it to be. No. The whole thing does have a really serious tone because yes. death is looming over everyone and mm -hmm. they're trying to escape it. It doesn't really have that grand sense of adventure. You know what's weird? He fulfilled his mission. The computer told him to find Sanctuary and destroy it, and he did. Because he killed Box. Yeah. <laughs> if you go by the letter of the mission, he, he did what the computer told him to do. How's that for a robot? You could see the actor's lips sometimes when he opened up his mouth. When you go back to old movies that have special effects, you just get the sense that they noticed it too, but they're like, nobody's going to care. This is new. They'll be looking at how shiny he is and not at how fleshy his lips are. Right, right. Whereas nowadays, it's like everyone notices everything mm -hmm. and talks it to death. We have much more convincing model landscapes that would be coming down the way. Again, the opening shot of Blade Runner in comparison to the Mystery Science Theater opening of this. <laughs> it looks good enough. What did you think of the ending? If you look at the look on my face, you might know how I felt about it. I would I, go... I felt like this pretty you much. You felt like that? It was kind of like, and they lived. And the computer went crazy mm -hmm. because it was given ideas that were contrary to what it believed. It's like that episode of Star Trek where they found that killer satellite and Kirk just like messed with it until it malfunctioned and blew up. I guess it's maybe contrary to the whole idea of, like, computers are magic. Mm -hmm. We talk about that in early 80s movies. Yeah. Computers don't act like humans, so we could do this thing to make it wreck itself. Mm -hmm. And that's plausible because computers. I am glad that the old man is okay. And then suddenly he's the most popular guy in the world. Yeah. Literally. Something I, I like to imagine, and at the same time I don't like to imagine, all of these women are used to relations with these young handsome men and so the, suddenly this guy shows up he's like the new thing <laughs> finally old man is gonna get some because <laughs> these young ladies are gonna be curious <laughs> at least for the first couple weeks he's gonna have a line out the door yep and, and then, then probably will kill he'll him. die him yeah <laughs> he'll die he'll yes. finally get the burial that he wanted and he'll be buried with a smile on his face yes what's your favorite image in the movie the shot of them just, like, looking at the sun was really beautiful. My favorite shot in the movie is when Logan is being interrogated and he's sitting in the dark. It's the most simple shot in the entire movie. Sometimes men are left alone in the dark to suffer or to think or to, to battle their demons and the world itself. That sounds to me like final thoughts. Done. Well, you should live every day as if it is last day. And so go visit our website. Welcome to TheBasementShow.com. There is a an group of episodes that we have made. All of them, in fact. <laughs> mm. You can watch all of our episodes. And there's a PayPal donation button. You can donate a few dollars to support our show. If you listen to my bumbling and fumbling, you'll realize that we need it. Yes, we need elocution lessons. So please, donate. 
just like Katrina did. And she has this to say. Could you please wish my best friend Caroline a happy birthday, July 4th. She introduced me to your videos in college, and we've been enjoying them together ever since. Happy birthday, Caroline. Belated birthday. We hope you had a good one. If you want to find out who the rest of our donors are and see the contents of our mailbag, we get stuff in the mail here, we have an entire other show dedicated just to this. It's called Unboxing, and you can see it this coming Friday. We created a show for our donors. We also answer viewer questions. We talk about the epic of Zatoichi and various other things. Outtakes from this show. It's got everything. And now, seen it. Seen it. I will freeze all of the seen it's in a cooler. Annie Organa writes, have you guys seen True Stories directed by David Byrne? Seen it. Seen it. I saw that a lot on cable when I was a kid. I saw the video for Wild Wild Life a lot, mm -hmm. and I loved that song. That was my gateway into the Talking Heads. Very eccentric movie, top to bottom. If there's ever a glimpse into David Byrne's brain, it's this film. The movie is called True Stories because he bases everyone in the movie off of newspaper articles that he found. Okay. From the New York Times down to the National Enquirer and the Weekly World News. I like the fact that he has the characters sing some of the songs, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm really glad that there is an album with the band doing all the songs. Yes. Because not all of the actors are great singers. Mm -hmm. There's the concert at the end of the movie. Yeah. And that's where the movie just stopped for me. There's a lot of points in this movie where it stopped for me. I, I don't love it. I wish it was great. Ellery Esquire writes, I'd really like to hear your thoughts on Brick. Seen it. Seen it. It's one of the few movies in my recent history that I watched, and then the next night I watched it again, and the weird patois that these high school kids are using. I had mixed feelings about it, because as I was watching it, I thought, man, this dialogue is really inventive. And at the same time, I thought, man, this dialogue is really full of itself. <laughs> you get that. If you're trying sure. oh, yeah, this, absolutely. this crazy style, it's like, oh, well, he's doing something that I can't think of anyone else who's really done it. Paul Trainor writes, The Darjeeling Limited got a lot of bad reviews, but I enjoy it mostly because of the great soundtrack. I assume you two have seen it. You assume correctly. Seen it. I always regret missing a Wes Anderson film on the big screen. This is one of those. Even though this could be my least favorite of his. It is definitely my least favorite of his. It seems self-consciously quirky, whereas the rest of his films are just quirky. My issue with it is classist. Look, these people are dealing with their father's death by going on this trip across India together on a train and seeing all this exotic stuff and finding their mother and all this. It's like, yeah, well, you know how I, felt, how I dealt with my father's death? By going back to work. It hit me at the wrong time in my life. Where I'm oh, like, yeah. Stop your whining about your lives because you can't get around to the fact that you can mourn, you know, because you can't mourn your father. I didn't care about any of the three main characters. There is a flashback in the movie where they stop by a garage on the way to the dad's funeral. To get the luggage. There is a shot of, of the man who owns the garage as he finds out that this man died. And it's played by the director, Barbette Schroeder. Who oh, did, yeah, uh, yeah. Barfly. Just the look on his face, and it's like, that is the only true emotion in the entire movie. That's someone who knows what death is right there. Maybe you're supposed to be feeling this about these three guys. Maybe you're not supposed to like them. Maybe you just come to understand them. Yeah, but that doesn't seem like Wes Anderson's way. Hmm. Half Monty Eleven writes, Seen it? The Great Dictator. Slapstick mixed with beautiful symbolism, mixed with a heart-melting powerful scene. At the end, brilliant movie. Yeah, that scene is really powerful. Seen it. Sometimes you lay it on thick because you have to lay it on thick. You know, yeah. it's like that monologue at the end of the movie. A lot of people can say it's overly sentimental or overly idealistic. It's like, no, it's what the world had to hear in 1940. Sure. And... Sometimes we still have to hear it now. And it's unfortunate that that monologue came back to bite him on the ass later because he says the word comrades. Oh. And that is identified with communism. Yeah. Very powerful movie. And at the same time, it's it's really hilarious. Like, mm -hmm. there's scenes that are beautiful and funny at the same time when what? he's dancing with the globe. Oh, my God. Dancing with the globe. It's, it's so great. I think it might be the same scene where he gets really excited and he goes to the curtain and he, like, just he climbs up the curtain. <laughs> yeah. If you look at a movie like this, this is really where his genius comes out. Yeah. That's seen it. And that's our show. We watched uh, Logan's Run. <laughs> wow, what a thrill ride. They ran and ran. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. 
This concludes Sci-Fi July. We hope you guys had a good time. Our next month in the calendar is August. That's and right. so our theme for that is a look back in August where we revisit some of the themes that we've done in the past on the show. I was going to do a random drawing and figure out what our themes were going to be from the Marvel Comics dice bag, but I looked at my list and there were two that just really jumped out at me that I really wanted to do, and so I'm just going to do those. And our first one involves the old Cineplexity game. Tona, if you please. Cineplexity is where you draw <coughs> cards and you combine them and you come up with movies that satisfy both criteria. I'm going to give you a combination and you're going to come back with a movie ah. that satisfies those conditions. Oh, that's interesting. Panic in the Year Zero was not much of a science fiction film, and so, you know what? I think we're gonna give our viewers a little sci-fi bonus. Oh. Your movie will be a science fiction film. Okay. The second criteria, title starts with M through S, and then includes articles. Well, I don't think there's any articles that are between M and S. Exactly. So if the movie starts with a the, you can't pick it. Oh, okay. This is what we have. Deal with it. What is Craig going to pick? Do you have some ideas? Let us know in the comments. Otherwise, we will see you next time. A good night. Good night. Sandman, put your hands on your head. Clasp your fingers together. Now turn your hands over. Palms up. Now shake it all about. Now do the hokey pokey, then turn yourself around, Sandman. That is what it's all about. Fish and plankton. And they see a mushroom cloud rising over Los Angeles. Forecast for Bakersfield vicinity. Clear and warm. Really warm. Like as warm as you could ever Extremely imagine. Extremely warm. Then it's going to get winter. Aren't you going to stop? They might have valuable goods that you could salvage. We are now road warriors. <laughs> That's right.